Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to build an airplane with this material. So this is called Koro Sheet, and I'm gonna show you guys why this is my preferred choice for making RC airplanes and why you should make one with this. So earlier this year, I did do a video where I compared Koro Sheet and foam board, but ever since then, I've learned a lot more about this material and I just wanna share it with you guys. So, but before we actually go into how to build an airplane with this, uh, we first need to understand how this material actually works. So let's get into it. So once again, this is Coro Sheet, Corrugated Sheet, Coro Plast, whatever you wanna call it. But the most accurate name is PVC Sheet, since it's made out of polyvinyl chloride, a plastic widely used for making pipelines. Now taking a look at its structure, you notice there's two continuous horizontal members and multiple vertical members. This is very similar to a number of I section beams connected together and these vertical members extend all the way up to where you cut it. And it is these long vertical sections that determine the strength and characteristics of this material. So changing the direction of loading with respect to these members or lines will give you different results in terms of strength meaning that this material is anisotropic, which means that the properties change with respect to direction. So for Coro Sheet, if load is applied on the lines, we get minimum bending and maximum rigidity. While if we rotate the orientation by 90 degree and then apply load, you can observe that it bends easily and isn't rigid. So this is the most important aspect of this material that you should be aware of before even cutting out parts for your airplane. So with this basic understanding, let's go over how you should draw, cut and build your own airplane. So in short, if you're building a box fuselage, the lines should be vertical to get maximum compression strength and bending resistance. For a straight wing, the lines on the top and bottom surface should be parallel to the wingspan. And for a swept wing, the lines on the bottom surface should be parallel to the length of the wing while it doesn't matter all that much for the top surface. If you look closely, you can see that the bottom and top orientations are completely different. For the wing spar, the lines should be vertical with respect to the spar length, and for a rudder, the lines should also be vertical. But for a curved part like an engine cover or for the skin, you need the lines oriented perpendicular to the bend, and you would have to cut open one of the surfaces of the material so that it bends without any resistance. I used this technique in my previous video where I made an engine cover for my long easy plane. I've been doing a prototype build series on that plane. So if you wanna see a more in-depth explanation and demo of the techniques I used, check out those videos. And also, don't forget to subscribe. Now in terms of gluing certain parts, for example, gluing two wing halves, it'll be very difficult to glue the edges together as it's hollow and the surface area for the glue to stick to is very low resulting in a very weak joint. So to overcome this problem, we have to increase the area of contact and we can do this by gluing on a box bar between the two halves, giving the glue a large surface to stick between. Now, as I was saying, even before drawing the plants onto the material, you have to ask yourself which part requires maximum strength and which requires maximum flexibility. And you have to keep asking yourself this question for every individual part because they also have a different purpose in the structure of the airplane. So with a basic foundation laid on how to build an airplane with Coro Sheet, let's look at some build techniques to drastically increase strength. So the first technique is to use a stronger reinforcement material like balsa wood in weak areas of the plane structure. Instead of using balsa wood, you can also use ice cream sticks, but I prefer using a PCB board. One, because it's hollow. Two, it's reinforced with metal making it very strong and at the same time light. Cutting the PCB board is a bit difficult, but totally worth it. You could also use some thin aluminum sheets. The second technique is to use a thicker sheet or to stack multiple layers together. This will increase your weight by a small amount, but you'll end up with a much stronger airplane. This all depends on what performance characteristic you are trying to achieve. Now let's go over some advantages of this material. So the first thing is its durability. If you crash your airplane, this material will just bend or crease and will absorb the impact in such a way that it will just you know, remain intact. While many materials like foam board will just break into pieces. It's also very lightweight. 
This material is water resistant. Corrosheet doesn't absorb moisture or water, while some materials like foam board and Depron do. Although you can get waterproof foam board, but that's very expensive. Another big advantage is its affordability. This material is very cheap, but this may depend on where you live and what thickness and size you buy. But nevertheless, it is very cheap. It is also widely available. In my place that is in India, you can go to any glass house or hardware store and ask for PVC or plastic sheet or just use all the names and easily get it. If the shopkeeper still doesn't understand, just tell him it's a material used as signboards and you should go home happily. So far, I've made around three airplanes with this material and I have to warn you that it isn't the easiest material to work with and that the build experience might not be that pleasant but that extra effort is totally worth it. So if you want to build an airplane that is strong, durable, lightweight and inexpensive, Korashid is the answer and I will be answering all your questions in the comment section. Hope you guys found this video helpful. If so, then don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to like as more likes means my video then gets promoted to a wider audience. So I appreciate every single like. Also check out my other videos and that's it for this week. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time, bye-bye.